Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here on Friday, and it is the end of the Woodland Wonderland. Such a fun project. Here's a little booklet we've been making, and there's a kit for this autumn version that the Cat Fat Quarter Shop put together, and they did such an amazing job. This is also the designer, Joanna Figueroa's fabric line, and I love how it turned out in these autumn colors. Let me just scroll you in. Take a look at the top. Take a look at some of the blocks a little closer. I haven't put my red and white ones up on the on there yet, but look at the owl. I still, you know, I did that in red and white, so I'm gonna put the red and white up there, but these are all in these autumn colors are so gorgeous. And there at the bottom is a cute little gnome, just adorable, I love him. And I have a backing fabric from the same line, which is kind of a mushroom, dark mushroom, with a white vine, creamy vine on it. So that really goes well with this gray. So I have to get that uh, sewn together to get it ready to go to the spa. Now I did do a little video tip on sewing these flying geese, just how I handled it. You might handle it differently, but here it is. When doing these flying geese, it's much easier to press all the points uh, up rather than having pressed this thing back. But if you had pressed it back like this, then your corner exposures, which you have two of them for me because I'm going to put an outer border, then I'd be able to see that intersection. But because I did it this way, I am just going to fold back the corner. So let me do one up here. That one, I'm just going to fold it back so I can see that intersection. That way when I come up to it, I will come right through it and not be chopping off my points. So that's it. That's it. This guy, I will show you again after it comes back and is quilted. But I hope if you loved it and you are making it that you get yours finished up. It's time to wrap that up here in January so that you can get it quilted. If you want to do from the kit, you have plenty of time to have it done for the fall. It'll be so perfect. So darling. Okay, I have a book that I contributed to. It's called, it's on red and white quilts with my publisher, Martingale. They asked me to submit a design and here is the cover. This is a preview. Uh, you can pre-order the book. The link is at my website and down below today. I'm so excited about this book. They asked a lot of different designers to contribute. And so there'll be a large variety of red and white quilts, which are my favorite, you know, red, red, everything red. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, I want to show you the quilt uh, Holiday Homies. Whoops. So I've got, I wanted, we had it on the wall, but I just wanted to show you a couple of the borders, uh, corners, how they came back. So here's a miter corner. They're all just a tiny little bit different uh, how, you know, the pattern ended up. But I, I like it. I'm glad I went ahead and did that. Then the border fabric, I have quite a bit of it still. So I thought, well, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to make a pillow cover to go with it for the living room. So this is just laying on top of the pillow just to, just to see how it looks. But I think it'll be nice. I'm going to quilt that. I will quilt just the cover, not the backing part, because I just think it gives it a little bit more texture and weight and just feels nicer. I also made the binding, which will go in the binding basket. So remember that. Uh, and I kept a little bit of this extra because I'm, I'll just put it in the stash, but I'm not sure if I got all the enough of the binding. Uh, I did a huge big label, took the, took Buck, put Buck on the label there. I just think he's so cute. This reminds me so much, this quilt of when we would go skiing when I was a kid. And then some of this red fabric, I have squares for my scrap system, two and a half inch squares. And then the backing is made for it with my um, Harmony. So this is, I got the Hunter Green, which goes with the greenery on the, the animals. So that is all ready to go. And I will send it off to the spa. So maybe I will, I should be able to get it back and enjoy it this winter. I'm going to hang it up. I think I'm going to hang it in my hallway so I can see it when I go up and down the stairs. That'll be where I put it. So I have a couple of goodies to show you that I wanted to be sure that you knew about. There's this great book, and I know a lot of you have this book. It's, it's, um, it's sort of a companion with the, not really, I think they also have a cross stitch, but it's a similar name of the flea market. And this was a flea market uh, fabric line and there's a quilt, but this quilt, but the book has a lot of other projects besides the main quilt. And one of them 
is this table runner, which the blocks are so cute, the fabrics are so happy, and there is a kit that you can get to go along with this book. So here is what the kit looks like for those blocks. And there's also, I'm just gonna open it a second here. All right, so here is the kit that, that comes with a whole spool of the red rickrack, so darling, because it's used as an accent. Now they're big blocks, but there's all the fabric. It's got, I think the backing fabric is also in there. They're really happy, sort of 30s inspired fabrics. Now I thought that the um, pattern would be really darling if you did like three of them, which would be a little bit, this is more like a bed runner size because it's pretty long. It's 95 inches long. So that's like a bed runner size. But you could do like pillows with this kit. You could just do three of them as a, if you have a little bit wider table, I mean, longer table, that'd be pretty down a table with the extra pillow. Um, you could just take the four blocks and you could do a wall hanging or a square table topper. So it's so much variety to this. So of course, I've got your links for you. But if you have that book, or if you like the book, you can get a kit for that project. And I did get some other fabric. Uh, I wanted to get some of this sort of fabric that looks like ticking. This is designed by Chelsea of the house, the um, Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. <laughs> so she has some fabric lines that she uses uh, for things. And there's a couple other colors, but I got that summer blue, the red, 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 everything red, and black. I like how this looks like that old fashioned ticking. So there's, I, there's some cream and a bunch of other colors. I also grabbed this at the same time because I just thought it was gorgeous. I think I got a yard of it so that I might use it for a small project for a border. Uh, just beautiful. I think it came from a Halloween line, but it just, I just really think it looks nice. And if you're looking for like making things for people who don't like flowers, this is a great one because it's got that nice graphic to it and it's, you know, like more sophisticated maybe. Also on the fabric front, somebody mentioned that there was the Kath Holden, the Kath Holden that I'm doing that woodsy quilt that she had one of her previous lines had like a fabric that looked like gum papers. So like when you, you know, folded the gum papers, ah, so I, I had to go search on Etsy for it. And then while there, the store also had the one that looked like, uh, you know, embroidery or tapestry. So I had to get a piece of that. What am I gonna do with this? I don't know, but I just had to have it. This is how you collect, how and why you collect. Look at the little house, so cute. So I now own those. <laughs> and then I also picked up uh, one of the, I picked up some really sweet buttons because I thought I'd like to see, to play around with some buttons. And then my friend Christopher did this, it's called, um, what's it say? Lint happens, lint happens. <laughs> A little lint roller for the room so I can get that stuff off of me. And it's like, <laughs> how does that happen? It's just always like you just walk around the room and you get lint on you. I also grabbed this little bag which I thought was so cute. It's called a knitting bag, but I think it's really, I love the fabric. I thought, oh, I think I might put a present in it for somebody. I've already sent my mom's present. Her birthday is Sunday, which is also my niece's birthday. So Sunday is a birthday day around here. Well, not here, wherever they are. That's, <laughs> I always call my mom on her birthday and we open, she opens her presents and she calls me on my birthday and I open my presents. So it's always fun to do that. Okay, another thing, I've got a few um, quilts from the vault to show you because I've just been going through sorting, whoops, sorting and I wanted to show you a couple of them. Uh, on our morning chat, Kendall said he's starting the Dear Jane quilt. <laughs> See, now Kendall, I've mentioned it here, so you'll have to keep going. He's going to hand piece all the blocks. I think he said one a week. So I thought I would show you my dear Jane again. This is from blocks I started so many years ago. And then I added the alphabet because I wanted to get at least a decent size quilt. Uh, and someday I would like to make the whole dear Jane with the triangles and everything, the whole shebang because these are the blocks that were supposed to be that. And it, you know, it just, uh, it didn't happen. 
and they got put away for too long and then I lost interest in that and I did other things and so someday I'll go back to that. A few others uh, that I'm uh, taking photos of and then refolding because let me show you let me just show you this little clip of how I'm addressing the shelves to get them now all folded neatly because when I first uh, put them all on the shelves I just put them I, 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 I organized them somewhat but I didn't fold them real neatly uh, and now I'm doing that and sorting through them so here's a clip I want to get all the shelves neat and tidy this is pretty much done I'm leaving this as a staging area because this is what I want to do with all the rest that are over here I've got this stuff on the shelf to figure out there's a whole bunch of things on the bookshelves back there so these here all need pulled off so I've pulled this shelf off and sorted tidy and as I'm sorting it I'll figure out what items I'll keep and which are going to the donation so right now this is still the donation those are a very large quilts that I need to put a rack up to take photos so I am excited to get these at least tidied up and organized these are all books and all book quilts on here plus behind it on the shelf so let's take a few uh, look at a few of them this was from is from a book called uh, all in a row and it's on the cover look at this so they're fun you can actually you ever think of taking the row and just making it by itself the clothesline I just love this row that I designed uh, look at the pockets look at the quilting for the pot make pockets on there <laughs> it was so fun to do and of course doing a whole quilt of the different rows is mega fun but just one row is you know you can decorate with that this is one of my favorite pieces that I'm look at it's actually a companion to a wall hanging called wild rose and I I don't know where the wall hanging is so I'm looking for that in the shelves <laughs> I'm like I'm not sure where it is and then I have to keep it out to keep them together here's a couple of basket quilts that I've done over the years this one was uh, from the take the fear out of no this is from the color book the, everything is linked down below and at my website but this is from my color book uh, and it was basically taking a photograph and then taking the colors out of it and using it to be inspired by a quilt and this was inspired by my trip to China which uh, had a, a beautiful picture of people dancing with ribbons out in the park and that inspired that quilt this is from a very early book uh, to go with my first fabric line and so there's baskets again looking a totally different way and this was done in 2003 so quite a long time ago now I don't remember I think this was in a magazine this one so it's got some patchwork and some applique and this is from 2004 so here is the front with the patchwork I like that big um, patchwork block I may have to work that up into something again and then here's the backing on that one now I'll show you one more so this is from my novelty print book and it's using different several different fabrics that have trains on it so this is like a great quilt where you can mix and match uh, fabrics that are themed like this just gather them all up and then you know use them in 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 one quilt together so my great-grandfather worked for the Pennsylvania Railroad and lived right on the railroad tracks right he went to work just across the railroad tracks and Greg lived on those same railroad tracks and my mom's my mom lived across the street <laughs> so it was a, a little a bit of my history so the this book is uh, you can still get I think a digital copy of the book I'll link you know links are there and at my website today you can also get uh, you can you can usually get a hard copy like on Amazon resellers okay so that's all those things so I wanted to show you a few while I was getting them out and taking photos and working on those shelves now I also have today yes I have the layout for the secret lives of color so it's at my website today tomorrow is block six and also, um, I think what we're going to do is we'll do each color section, which has like you know seven to ten chapters. 
we'll do each month. So white, this is the first color, is this month, and then the next color will be in February. So we'll just go through and I'll, on the calendar, I'll be arranging. So this is like the month of February, the month of March, month of April. And then that way we will finish all the blocks by the end of October. Then you have November to quilt your quilt. And I think that'll work out and make it manageable because the blocks don't take long. And then we'll, I'll disperse them through the, the month uh, to, to make them up. And some of you are actually making all of them at once for the color whatever works for you it's to have fun with it i like kind of being surprised and saying oh you know seven times a month i'm going to read a, a chapter learn about a color i don't i like to spread it out so if you're like me we will be doing that spreading it out <laughs> and tomorrow will be another color that we'll do also tomorrow i will talk more about uh, all different projects that are coming up and uh, how to look at building this because we're going to make this together starting on Monday but tomorrow on Saturday I will do a little bit more talk about picking some fabrics for this and looking at your stash so that if you have maybe a layer cake or a jolly bar that you haven't used you know look around for something like that that you haven't used and or you can just use your regular fat quarters and scraps and things so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that okay I Oops, there's a block in the view. There we go. Ah, oh, done, done, done. The top is done. It's now a flimsy. The top is a flimsy, and it is uh, all ready to get packaged up and, and shipped off to the spa. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> okay, my friend. I love you. Mwah. See you online. <laughs>